Scott Yarborough, Lisa Mattingly, and Melissa Barlow, the officials who have the honor of working tonight's championship game. And UConn controls the opening tip. Player of the year, Sue Bird, will set up the offense. And Oklahoma will stay in their straight up man to man defense. Swin Cash backs in, missed the first shot. And a foul underneath on Asia Jones going for the rebound. Well, I think the other three ways to beat a, a top team is one, foul trouble, two, injuries, and you hope no kid gets injured, and the three is poor shooting. And in warm-ups, Tennessee, or Tennessee, Connecticut looked a little tight. Ross to Caulfield. Ross, an excellent three-point shooter. Caulfield works in, forces one up from 15 feet, didn't get the bounce, but good hustle by Ross for the offensive rebound. You know, so much has been made of how offensively powerful these teams are, but defensively, they take pride in what they're able to accomplish. Both these teams are capable of coming up with big steals and, and stops at key situations. Well, all UConn has done is match the best ever, allowing only 51.1 points a game over the course of the season. There's a poor pass and picked off by Cash. Missed the shot, got it back. Swin Cash opens the scoring. So much has been made, and Gino Ariam has talked about his players, the intensity level that they bring to the game. Just their passion to win for each other. Caulfield, nice pass inside, and Caton Hill gets the first bucket for the Sooners. And good execution by Oklahoma. Sherry Cole said, we've just got to be us. Had a chance to talk to her before the game. We'll stay right with them and not be intimidated. Beautiful scoop by Williams. Quickly down court to Stacy Dales, the All-American guard. She tries to penetrate, kicks it back to Caulfield, and Caulfield is fouled beyond the arc. Well, here's the thing you hope. Frustration because what happened in the first meeting with these two teams, nine players had four fouls, and two of them fouled out. Both coaches would like to see this game played and not a lot of fouls called because they felt in that first meeting in December that there was so much stoppage, nobody got into a flow. There were 49 fouls called in that ball game. It must have lasted forever. Caulfield is an 86% free throw shooter. She misses the first. In fact, she's number one all time at Oklahoma. With this one, she has a chance to tie at four. I talked to, talk to Gino Ariema before the game, and he was talking about how high-powered offensively these two teams are. He said, but we'll run. Don't for, not look for us to run. We'll get our transition game going, but we want to change the pace. We want to try and make Oklahoma walk the ball up a little bit, make them uncomfortable in their offense. A nice reach and steal by Caton Hill, and then Ross trying to make something happen inside, threw it away. Well, Ross and Ross coming off a career-high 26 points the other night against Duke, had the shot, being unselfish. And, you know, both these teams start four seniors, so as much information has been given out about this Connecticut team, this Oklahoma has four pretty good seniors also. Little handoff to Bird. Beautiful pass inside by Williams. And what makes Connecticut so tough too, Mike, is the fact that their front line team, their players with Swin, Cash, and Williams, they are adept at passing the ball and look for each other. And catching it. There's another turnover for Oklahoma. Lanisha Caulfield throws it away. That's three. Here's the ball inside to Tamika Williams, and look at her split the defense. And you see Cash on the weak side, and that's one thing that Sherry Cole talked about, is that we can't help out too much down low because of the way that they are able to pass the basketball. Cash got into the lane, knocked away. Bird with a loose ball, leans into it from the baseline, did not get the roll, but Cash is right there to follow. And you can see Sherry Cole very upset about the non-blockout. She had said to me before the game, it's not the first shot that bothers me. It's the second and third shot that the Huskies are able to get those shots to go down. Swin Cash was the only one who left her feet and got that rebound. Sherry Cole, who was the assistant coach with Gino Ariema this past summer on the Junior World Championship team that 
went to Czechoslovakia. And they picked up a little bit from each other. Caulfield cut off at the baseline. Good pass to Talbert. Can't hit the shot. And here comes Yukon. Loose Kate. ball, stolen, and a foul. Caton Hill knocked that ball loose. And right now, Connecticut's getting called for fouls. Tamika Williams will pick up her second. Second foul. Right Sherry Cole right. said coming into this game that in a series, we might have a tough time. Best out of seven, best out of nine. But you know what? That one game, we got a chance. And that's what a lot of coaches were saying this weekend, saying Oklahoma believes in themselves that they can beat the Huskies. Tarazi from three. But the follow is good. Tamika Williams puts it back in. And this is what Connecticut was able to do in that first meeting. Control the backboards. Asia Jones, in fact, had a career high 18 rebounds in that game. That offensive glass is going to do it for Connecticut because they've got the advantage inside. And Connecticut really not pounding the ball inside as of yet. They've taken some outside shots, but it's the offensive rebounding. They missed a lot of their initial shots, but they've been able to follow. And there is Asia Jones, the senior from Piscataway, and it's 12-4 UConn. Caulfield kicks it back outside. Williams on Stacy Dales. Caulfield cutting, knocked away. Dales got it back then. Tries to hit the layup and misses. One and done for the Sooners. Bird, great hesitation, then lost it out of bounds. Sue Bird cannot believe that a foul was not called off that drive. Connecticut with the early advantage. They're up 12-4 on Oklahoma. Connecticut with the early lead on Oklahoma. Let's go to Michelle Tafoya. Mike, in the timeout, Gina Oriema looked at Tamika Williams and said, hey, you have two fouls. Don't worry. Keep playing. I'm leaving you in. Don't worry. Then he turned to the rest of the team and he said, hey, all the nervous energy, all the blah, all of the nerves, they're gone now. Let's take it in four-minute clips from now on, four minutes at a time. Mike? Michelle, I'll tell you where the nerves are right now with Oklahoma. They're down 12-4. And are just getting wiped out on the boards. Caulfield, nice drive with the left hand. Well, that and the fact that they were one of five before that shot was made by Caulfield. Caulfield and Ross have to get involved in the offense. The guards have 60% of the points on this Oklahoma team. For a nice entry pass to Asia Jones, and she gets the easy one. Sue Bird with another assist. She's already broken Jen Rosati's single season record. And UConn has more assists as a team than any club has ever had. Nice runner by Roslyn Ross. And Roslyn Ross really has to get on track. Sherry Cole said that she's the one player that fuels everybody else when she starts hitting shots. 14-8 UConn. Pass a little too strong that time. And good hustle by Talbert to get down and tie it up. And the possession arrow will give the ball to the Sooners. Jamie Talbert doesn't get a lot of credit. She's a senior on this team at 6-2 out of Elkhart, Kansas. And she was a junior transfer, but she fills that role in the middle with her size and just does the little things. She saved her best game of the year for Texas. And she had her only double-double with 16 and 10, so she's certainly capable. Talbert guarded by Jones. Caton Hill against the double team. Forced the shot up, somehow got it back, then forced it up over Swin Cash, who intimidated her shot. And she still knocked it loose. Bird, no look, Asia Jones. Caton Hill had knocked the ball loose, and that gave her teammates the opportunity to get back on transition. They did not, because you can see how well the Huskies pass the ball down the floor, and their big players run so well, even off the trailer, down the middle, Oklahoma's got to do a better job. Dales with the open look at the three, couldn't hit it. 16-8 Huskies. Asia Jones, this time from 16 feet. Caton Hill, the outlet to Dales. They need to get her involved more in the offense. Caulfield, excellent penetrator. Caulfield has a half dozen. Well, here's what Gino Ariama said. You see now Diana Trossi changing the pace of the game. 
He said, we're capable of scoring a lot of points, and so is Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma would like to have this a high-scoring game, although Sherry Cole told me before the game, no, we can win with a low-scoring game or a high-scoring game. Lanisha Caulfield with a nice pump fake and then goes around the defense, finishing off, going to the basket. And that's the one thing, Oklahoma, again, Mike, they've still got to continue to attack and be aggressive. They cannot be intimidated by this Connecticut team. Williams will go out for Connecticut. Ashley Battle checks in for the first time. The last foul call was on Caton Hill, her first, and the first against Oklahoma in this half. Bird, excellent defense by Ross. Just picked her pocket on the way up. Oh, nice pass. Ross left alone and credit the passing of Oklahoma for getting that open look, 16-13. Foul trouble all. Obviously, playing a role in this first half so far, Connecticut, they had some quick calls on them, and they played a little tentative. Cash back out to Tarazi, three-second call. Roslyn Ross with the quick hands, knocking the ball out of Sue Bird. And then she goes down on the other end. She passed the ball out high. And defensively, Connecticut just left. Roslyn Ross open. You cannot leave the shooters alone. Jackson in for the first time for Oklahoma. Caulfield for three. This would tie it off the mark. Jackson kept it alive and good hustle by Caton Hill to track it down. And like anything, Mike, it's about execution. Who's going to execute the best within their offense in this game and knock the shots down? Caulfield backs it out. Caton Hill got into the lane. Can't hit the shot. Tarazi, nice outlet to Bird, three on one. Cash. May have overpassed, but it'll work anyway as Ashley Battle scores. But to start it out, Diana Trossi so strong in the upper body to get that ball down half court with the outlet pass to Sue Bird. And they're going to call the ball to Oklahoma. I thought it was tipped by UConn. That's the call. It. It's 18-13, 11.53 to go, first half of play. Connecticut by five in the championship game over the Sooners. But see this little uh, masterpiece here? That's Sarah Hughes, who upset Michelle Kwan at the Olympics in Salt Lake. Ever since she was on the cover of SI, her team, Oklahoma, took it, framed it, put it in their locker room. They traveled with it. This has been their inspiration and their motivation. On the back is their team picture. Everybody from the freshman, sophs, juniors have added a piece to the puzzle. Guess who has the final piece? That would be Stacy Dales if they win against Connecticut tonight. All right, now they're within five. Jackson travels. And they're going to get Dales back in the ball game. She got a brief rest. Well, one of the things, again, Sherry Cole said before the game to me is that we've got to have smart passing. We cannot have the dumb turnovers. If we're going to turn the ball over, we need to do it in transition. We need to have something created, and we're being aggressive. We can't just turn it over when nothing is happening. That is going to hurt us. And you saw all the points coming from the Connecticut front court. The All-Americans, Bird and Tarazi, have yet to score. We mentioned Sue Bird was a little tight before the game, and she's just got to go out here and have fun loosen up a little bit. There's a block shot. Diana Trossi wanted the foul. Let's check in with Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, in the last time out, Gino Oriema was quite animated. He said, we have not gotten one loose ball because we tip it and stand there and watch Oklahoma get it. Also, we can't settle for jump shots. The ball has to go inside, then come out and swim cash. If you get the ball in the lane, don't stand there and hold it for 15 seconds. Get it out to someone quick. <laughs> he was quite lively, Mike. <laughs> to say the least, Michelle. 18-13, <laughs> UConn with the lead. And the shots that they're getting, Mike, in the ball, they said was blocked. But Connecticut has is a little bit standing around. They're looking to get the ball inside. But then the perimeter players, Bird and Tarasi, are standing. In the game the other night against Tennessee, they were cutting to the basket an awful lot. Just like that. But a travel call on Swin Cash as she took the inbounds pass. So Connecticut making uncharacteristic errors. That's a half dozen turnovers. And one thing that Connecticut did so well against Tennessee and all season long was their out-of-bounds play. And they have not looked sharp on their out-of-bounds. 
Shannon Selman, number 40, is in for Oklahoma as Caulfield knocks down the jumper. She has eight in the first half, and we're back to a three-point lead. Well, Caulfield with a nice little crossover going back to the baseline just shook her defense. And you can see Caulfield and Ross are just, and Ross is out of the game right now, Jackson in the game, but they are playing great defense. Diana Trossi with a nice fadeaway with Stales in her face. Good off-balance jumper. 20 to 15, and the first points from the UConn backcourt on that jumper. Lanisha Caulfield at 5'9". Look at the crossover, sends Bird the other way. Bird was concerned about the pick by Stacy Dales on the high side and went baseline. And again, the open shots, Oklahoma's knocking down. Dales just inside the three-point line, can't hit it. Knocked out of bounds. And Gino R.M. pleading his case to his players, the ball's right there, go get it. You know, telling Sue Bird what's he what he wants on this trip down. Well, he really feels that his players are capable of playing the half court game and slowing things up. They've done it a lot more this year. Cash backing in, strong move to the bucket, missed the shot, but draws the foul. Well, the Oklahoma fans wanted the elbow by Schwinn Cash. As she came in in the middle, watched the right elbow, just kind of she dips that shoulder right into Stacy Dales. Dales gets called for the foul, but Swin Cash dipping that shoulder. The Oklahoma players be a little bit more aware of it. Three of five, six, Cash, an average free throw shooter. And this is the first 69.1 on the year. And as much as this pace has kind of slowed up for Connecticut, you wonder in a sense, is it hurting them? As far as the transition, they love the transition. They've had it a couple times and they've scored off it. But in the half court, they're struggling a little bit. They're such a wonderful running team. But as I said, Gino R.M. had said before the game that he he just wants to make it a little unfamiliar to Oklahoma. Right now, maybe a little unfamiliar to, to Connecticut. Caulfield made a good move to get free, then lost the ball inside to Tarazi. Bird's got that fifth gear. Tarazi likes that little fadeaway off balance jumper. She's hit two in a row and it's 23 to 15. She is so strong and she's gotten so better at putting the ball on the floor. Nice, nice cut. backdoor cut by Caulfield, but she can't finish. Oh, Tarazi, <laughs> great pass, catch. Did you see that? <laughs> that was pretty. Swin Cash with nine, and Connecticut has its biggest lead of the game. Dales with a runner. Won't go. Here comes Williams to Tarazi. Ahead to Bird, and Bird drops it off, but a whistle and a foul. As you said, Mike, it looks like the Huskies feel a lot more comfortable in that transition game. The last three possessions, that's what they've done. Foul was on Selman, her first, and Bird a little slow to get up. As a freshman, she tore her ACL. Like three minutes into her career. And could not redshirt that year. They would not give her the redshirt, but sitting on the bench helped her tremendously. And Stacy Dales was a redshirt freshman, tore her ACL, so she's in her fifth year. Sue Bird has started 117 games for Connecticut. They've won 113 of them. Unbelievable. And wasn't hurt that much on that shot. 27-15. Undefeated and number one Connecticut. Playing the second-ranked Sooners of Oklahoma. Again, another good backdoor cut, but they can't get a shot out of it because of Asia Jones' defense. Bird nearly thrown away. Tarazi with a quick shot. A little strong. Here comes Jackson. Tarazi back on defense. Good crossover. Deanna Jackson, only a freshman, really changes the complexion for Oklahoma. It even gets higher up tempo for them when she's in the floor. And you really like how the fact that she took the ball right to the basket against Diana Tarazi. Averages nearly seven and a half off the bench. Tarazi for three. Hill's been hustling all over the court. She's gotten a lot of loose balls so far. Dales had an open shot and passed on it. Now she drives Stacy Dale. 
That's her first bucket, and it couldn't have come at a better time for the Sooners. It cuts the lead back to single digits at 27 to 19. We talked about the stars shining. Will Sue Bird knock down a three? And Stacey Dale's taking it upon herself, getting her team involved, seeing the wide open lane going to the basket. She went, missed one earlier, but she knows that she's not going to give up because the inside play is wide open. The impressive thing is Oklahoma has continued to attack this defense of Connecticut, and they've stayed right with the Huskies. Michelle, what do you have? Oh, Mike, Gino Ariema clearly trying to stop the momentum of Oklahoma by calling that timeout, told his team, what did I say about taking control of the game? You gave up two easy layups. Now get out there and take control of the game, Mike. And this is with them up by eight, I Michelle. Wanna, I want to know if he was animated. Just like a Disney drawing. <laughs> Tarazi penetrates this time and drops it off for the easy layup scored by Tamika Williams. That's the first time that Connecticut has been able to get into the lane like that and with the quick pass down low. That's the kind of passing that Connecticut does so well when they get inside and those short crisp passes. Caton Hill for three. Boom. Hill a 37 percent long range shooter. And Caton Hill a solid player. Only a junior, she'll be back next year. She had 14.6 rebounds against Duke the other night. Oklahoma hitting 40% early, and a foul on the jump shot by Swin Cash. And that will go against Caton Hill, her second. Caton Hill was a Kansas Player of the Year her sophomore year in 97 and then she transferred to Ada Oklahoma and played in Oklahoma went to camps for Sherry Cole when she was a sophomore at camp Felicia Whaley who was Big 12 player of the year and really the start of this whole program and first recruit for Sherry Cole Felicia Whaley was saying you got to get this kid she's stronger than I am <laughs> and Caitlin Hill was only a sophomore in high school at that time 11 points already for Swin Cash. 7.13 to go, first half. Connecticut's passing ability has made a big difference here in the first half. They're up by nine. Thirty-one twenty-two, UConn. Let's check in with Nancy Lieberman. Hey, Mike, if you want to learn how to run a fast break, check this out. UConn gets the rebound, and watch where the outlet pass goes. Right there. Stop it right there. This is the outlet pass. That is Tarasi with the ball. Her shoulders are going up the floor. They're not to the sideline. Now they get the numbers. They push tempo, and she can find her bigs on the inside. You wonder why they lead the nation in scoring?